Hello and welcome to the our online class. And today's chapter is amplitude modulations and demodulations. And the course title is AAA351-352 Analog or Principles of Communication Systems. I am Dr. Ishan Kaleem from ECE Department CEO Wa Campus. Okay, let's move to the lecture contents. In this lecture, we will cover two main topics. One is called the AM signal generation, that how we will generate the AM signal. And the other two, other topic is demodulation of AM signals. Here we will see how we can demodulate the AM signal on the receiver side. Okay, let's discuss the generation of AM signals. In this slide, we will look at how it is different different from the generation of conventional double sideband suppressed carrier AM modulation. So AM signals can be generated similarly by using double sideband suppressed carrier modulator as we discussed in the previous lecture. Here the modulating signal is A plus MT instead of MT. But as we don't need to suppress the carrier in AM, then its modulator will be as simple will be simple as compared to double side band suppressed carrier. What it means that in double side band suppressed carrier we don't need to send a separate carrier beside the message signal. So we suppress the message uh, with the additional carrier in the double side band suppressed carrier and only transmit the message signal. However, in AM signal we additionally transmit a separate carrier. So we have a message like A plus MT because it contains an additional carrier. So by using only diode instead of double sideband suppressed carrier would be enough to generate the AM signal. What does it mean? When we generate, we need a uh, AM signal, we need a carrier. So here, instead of independently, uh, instead of generating a carrier by using some oscillators, we will use the diode, this diode. This will act as a carrier signal. It will act like a generation of a carrier signal and this is our message signal that we need to modulate and this is our additional carrier signal which we need to transmit beside the message signal so to generate uh, the carrier on which we need to transmit we need a diode here so uh, as you know that wt is a response of a diode and uh, as by using the Fourier analysis for the diode, we get this one, half 2 by pi cos omega ct minus 1 by 3 cos 3 omega ct, so on. So this response is of the diode by using the Fourier analysis. You can verify this in the chapter 3 of this uh, book where we already have proven that what is the response of a rectifier diode. So now we have a message signal, this is our carrier signal, additional carrier signal which we need to transmit and this is our the message signal which we need to transmit and this is our carrier. Instead of the cos, we are transmitting here omega t and omega t will look like this one, right? So after multiplying this and removing the higher order terms, we will get the c by 2 cos omega ct, this plus 2 by pi mt cos omega ct so this is our am modulated signal so this is additional carrier and this is our modulated signal mt cos omega ct and the other terms suppressed by the band pass vector because this is the voltage of here at v v dash we named it as a v v v dash t and after passing through a band pass vector which is tuned at omega c and we get the output v naught t here and that output will be the our am signal Okay, in the previous slide, we have seen that uh, we have generated the AM signal. Now, the uh, here we will demodulate the AM signal. Demodulate means that we transmitted the signal from the AM transmitter and now we need to get back the message signal, original message signal M of T out of that generated signal. So, there are two types of demodulation. One is called the coherent demodulation and the other is called the non-coherent or asynchronous demodulation. 
what are the difference between these two demodulation can be carried out coherently like the uh, double sideband suppressed carrier where local carrier is generated what does it mean it means that in the double sideband suppressed carrier we didn't transmit an independent carrier beside the message signal so we need to generate the local carrier local carrier means the carrier at the receiver side we need to generate an additional carrier at the receiver side which will be used to demodulate the uh, message signal and we need it uh, we called it as a coherent because we have generated that additional receiver uh, additional carrier at the receiver side however coherent or synchronous demodulation defeats the purpose of the am why it defeats what does it mean it means that if as we are already transmitting an additional carrier in am modulation so if we perform the synchronous demodulation at the receiver side in am modulation then the purpose of transmitting the additional carrier will not be a useful so we will not in this case we will not take the advantage of the additional carrier so how we can take the advantage of additional carrier let's move on so we saw that the envelope of a am signal follows the message signal for mu equals to less or equal to 1 so this is the condition we have seen that the envelope of a am signal envelope what does it mean by envelope for example this is your carrier signal and after modulation we have a message signal that wires over the carrier signal right i didn't uh, plot it clearly but this is called the envelope when your message ride on the carrier signal this is called envelope so we saw that the envelope <coughs> of a am signal follows the message signal for mu equals to less of n so when the modulation index is less or equal to 1 in this case the envelope uh, the message signal is the envelope of a modulated signal so we need to demodulate this envelope so there are two types of non coherent methods of am demodulation you must remember there are two non coherent methods <clears throat> and these are valid only for when mu is greater than 0 and less or equal to 1 when this condition is not satisfied then the coherent modulation non coherent modulation methods are not useful and we can't recover the message accurately out of the modulated signal so these two messages uh, the modulation methods are rectifier detection and the envelope detection so these two are called the non coherent methods so let's move on how these two methods works and what are the block diagrams okay so this is the first we will discuss rectifier based demodulation in rectifier based demodulation why we called it as a rectifier based demodulation because we use a diode at the receiver side to demodulate our modulated signal this is our modulated signal and this is additional rectifier diode response which we multiplied with the our modulated signal so that's why it's it's named as a rectifier based of demodulation so let's see the, the details if an am signal is applied to a diode for example we have a this am signal modulated signal carrier message and the modulated total modulated signal combined modulated signal when we apply it to a diode and a resistor circuit like diode plus resistor the negative part of the am will be removed it may i will uh, clearly show you this on the next slide so negative part will be removed the output across the resistor is half wave rectified version of the am signal it's uh, clearly noticeable that <coughs> you also have seen many times that <coughs> when you pass the anything from the any signal from the diode it will clip the negative portion so similarly it happens with the am signal if you pass through the diode then it will half wave rectify it will rectify the negative portion so what does it mean the diode will act as like a pair of scissors by cutting off any negative half cycle of the modulated sinusoid so it will cut off the negative portion of this modulated sinusoid after multiplying with the diode right so at the rectifier output the am signal is multiplied by wt so 
in other sense we can say that the am signal is multiplied by the wt wt is the response of a diode so instead of multiplying with the cosine here the similarly similar results can be obtained by just passing the signal to the rectifier or the diode so this is the diode response so we multiplied this one with this signal so after doing some algebraic uh, manipulations we get the 1 over pi a plus mt plus other higher terms which are not required because our target is to extract this massive signal out of the combined signal okay let's see how it works this is the complete circuit diagram which i am talking here so when your massive signal moderated signal a plus mt cos omega ct this is your massive signal is applied to a diode here with the resistor here so what you will get you will get the half wave rectified version like the this portion is clipped off right this portion is clipped so you just get here the half wave rectified portion right so after passing through a low pass filter right you will get here low because it will remove the higher order frequency terms so we, you will just get 1 over pi a plus mt but you know that our target is to extract only massive signal not 1 over pi area so we need to separate this one so after passing to this capacitor capacitor will remove the dc terms so dc term means this level because your uh, dc level is high here like your the bottom or the x axis is adjusted so after removing the dc term this a term is a dc area so we will just get 1 by pi m so this is the uh, you can see that the message signal with some adjusted coefficients like 1 over 5 okay let's discuss then vrt is applied to a low pass filter of cut of v hertz so this is low pass filter which is tuned to v hertz like the frequency here we will get a plus mt over 5 we will get a plus mt over 5 this one right the DC term A over pi may be blocked by a capacitor to give the desired output MT over pi. So this capacitor is used to block the DC term. It should be noted that even though it is a WT that is used for multiplication, it is still a synchronous detection that is performed with the using a local area. So you can see that as we use the WT as a multiplication factor, so it is still a synchronous type of a detection because uh, instead of using a local carrier, we are using WT for multiplication. So, in the next, we will uh, see that the Gen 1 or the complete, you can see that the, uh, you can say that the complete non coherent detection because here you can also say that this is a coherent or synchronous detection because we are multiplying via WT, right? This one, diode. So, let's move to the next detection. Method. So the other one, the most popular one is the envelope detection. What does it mean? Envelope, when you modulate the signal, then your message signal is, uh, is message signal rides on the carrier signal, right? If for example, this is your message signal, right? positive part, negative part, so it's riding on the carrier, right? This way. So this one, this portion is called the envelope of a signal. This is the envelope, right? So if we uh, detect this envelope, this is called the envelope detection. So finally, if we detect, accurately detect this envelope, in other sense, we can say that we have accurately recovered the message signal. So let's move how it works. This is the block diagram. This is your AM signal applied to the, at the receiver side. And this is your diode. And it has a capacitor resistor this is the complete circuit let's discuss step by step how it works so the output of the detector follows the envelope of the modulated signal this is your modulated signal so the output of the detector this is output of the detector right it follows the message signal this one massive signal how it follows on positive cycle of the input signal for example this is the positive here and negative here this diode 
as the input grows and may exceed the charge voltage on the capacitor. So when here is positive, it will be a forward bias and it will charge the capacitor, right? And it is charged up to the may exceed the charge voltage. Already this is charged, so it will exceed the charge voltage of VCT, right? This turns on the diode and allowing the capacitor to charge up to the peak voltage of the input signal cycle. So it's conducting and it's in other sense it is also charging this capacitor. So when the ch uh, charge here is high and this becomes a negative side and this becomes a positive side, then this will be open, right? When a negative is applied here and positive, so it becomes open. And in this case, then it will start because it was already charged, so it will start discharging here in this direction, right? From into the load. So as the input signal falls below the peak value, because as peak means, for example, this is the peak, right? So it charges the capacitor up to this point, and afterwards, when the uh, this peak passes on, then capacitor this becomes open, right? Or uh, this you can see that uh, how it becomes open because this voltage is now high and this is low. So in this way, this is become the positive side and this become the negative side. So it charges up to here and then as the input signal falls below this peak value, it falls quickly below the capacitor voltage, right? And the diode therefore opens as I told you. Capacitor then discharges to the resistor R at a slow rate. This capacitor discharges to this resistor, right? At a slow rate with the time constant RC. You already studied what is time constant. So in this case, RC is the time constant, and the discharge rate depends totally depends on this time constant. The same scenario during the next positive cycle. So this scenario continues and is open, is charges, discharges. So next, let's see on the next slide how it looks like. So this is the, the demonstration of the circuit, for example, this is your positive, it charges the capacitor up to this value, so here it charges, and then this charge is high and this becomes negative, and in other sense, when this voltage is high and this load low, and capacitor discharges to the load, and again it charges here, and then discharges here, right? Charges, discharge, charge, discharge, charge, discharge. So you can see that this is following the envelope buffer signal. So in this way, you can recover the signal out of the moderator signal. So there is one problem that if you select the RC constant too large, then what will happen? It will take lot large time to discharge, long time to discharge, and then it will not exactly follow the envelope buffer signal. So the RC selection is very important here. You need to select accurately the RC time constant value so that it follows the, exactly follows the envelope signal. So during each positive cycle, the capacitor charges up to the peak well voltage of the input signal and then decays slowly until the next positive cycle, right? For example, look at this. It charges up to here, and then this is the other cycle, right? And then charging starts again from here, like this one. So up to here it charges, and then during this period it discharges, right? So during each positive cycle, capacitor charges up to the peak voltage of the input signal, and then decays slowly until the next positive cycle. So as a result, the output voltage VCT closely follows the rising envelope of the input AM signal. So in this way, it will follow the envelope of our signal. Slow capacitor discharge via the resistor R allows the capacitor voltage to follow our declining envelope. So if we will uh, discharge the capacitor slowly, so it will allow the capacitor to follow the declining envelope. So capacitor discharge between positive peaks causes a ripple signal frequency omega c in the output. Ripple can be reduced by choosing a larger RC. So as we have seen that, this result like that, right? So if we want to reduce these ripples, what we need to select? We need to select the larger value of RC as 
we have seen on the previous slide that in this way it will discharge after a long time. So it will not give some very large ripples. So it will reduce the ripples. So this these were the two methods. One is called the rectifier based method and other is called the invariable detection based method. And these two methods are used to detect the AM signal on the receiver side. So these are called the demodulation of the AM signal. Thank you for listening there. And for question answer section, there will be a separate slot. If you have any questions, then please prepare. And the exact date and time will be communicated to you later on. So please prepare your study. Thank you for listening.